torquing this object or rotating it according to physics-based um, uh, uh, physics based parameters. And so we don't want to actually rotate something uh, when we're dealing with physics, just like we don't want to translate or move something with physics. We want to add a force or we want to add a torque. We don't want to add a rotation, don't want to add a translation um, because it'll kind of mess with the physics engine. And we'll talk about those details uh, a little bit later, but I just want to kind of get us deep into this project before we start um, getting lost in the weeds with it. So what I want to do is I want to set up a new uh, state machine. And I'm going to do that by, if you look at the Playmaker editor window, there's a couple of drop down menus. There's a select menu all the way over to the right. To the left of that is the lock menu. And to the left of that is a menu that tells us what state machine we're looking at. In this case, it should say FSM thrust. I'm going to click on FSM thrust and go to add FSM to player, which will give us a second state machine on that same object. Okay, and we're going to build a second mechanic. So before I even start building this, I'm going to go to the FSM tab, and I'm going to call this FSM. Um, I'm going to call mine torque, although you can call it rotate because it's essentially going to rotate. Um, I'm using torque because that's the you know the, the proper action that we're going to use, not rotate, but it's effectively going to rotate this object. <coughs> I'm going to call state one idle for now. And with state one selected, I'm going to go into my physics category. And I'm going to add torque. I'm going to double click. So I have add torque. Okay, now, currently, um, we don't want to hardwire a value in for torque. If we did, uh, just for the demo, I'm going to go to my Z because this is the axis we're going to want to torque on, right? Because if we look at the axis of rotation for our player, we want to kind of go back and forth. It's the through the Z axis, okay? So that's the, the place where we're going to want to torque this thing. Um, you don't have to do this, but I do want to demo that if I change this value, say to 20, and I hit the play button, we have a hard fixed value. And so this thing is going to torque itself or try to rotate and spin continuously. You can see that, um, well, actually, if I would have checked every frame, it would have. Try that again. Um, you can see that this thing is going to try to um, just keep rotating as much as it can until it rolls off. We want to be able to control that. So we don't want a hard value in here. We want uh, a variable value, okay? something that we can change over time. So I'm going to toggle this play button. I'm going to go back and hit the equal sign in the Z uh, axis. And this is the thing that we're going to pick up to add uh, a torque. We're going to capture some user input here. Okay. Now, the user input that we're going to capture, uh, we're going to go back to the input category so we can find that input. And for now, we're going to do a get access vector um, just, just temporarily. Okay, we're actually just going to use a get access, but I want to show you the get access vector first. If we double click on get access vector, uh, we have this action that's looking for horizontal and vertical input. Uh, we have a plane that we're mapping to, and I'm going to store this vector into a new variable. You can see, in fact, that this uh, get access vector, it has a red drop down menu which says that it's requiring this field uh, to be used. This is variable data. This should all, you know, kind of start ringing some bells. This is a, a container that we're going to feed some information into. It's not a hard value, it's a variable value. So, and, and we'll explore these a little bit, you know, further later. But um, I'm going to take the store vector drop down menu and choose to create a new variable. And I'm simply going to call this. Um, player, all lowercase, underscore, T-O-R, or maybe just capital letter T-O-R, just something to kind of give you a little bit of a distinction. Uh, so it's basically short for player torque. I'm going to create the variable. And I'm going to go click on this little debug check mark. OK, so what the get access vector is doing is it's listening to user input. 
And by default, Unity has already pre-configured this uh, input manager for us, which we'll look at later in the semester. But basically what the input manager is saying is that your horizontal axis is equivalent to the A and D keys. The vertical axis is equivalent to, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, A and D, uh, is equivalent to W and S. Okay, so we have the AWSD keys mapped as horizontal and vertical movement. Uh, it's also mapped to the arrow keys and it's also by default mapped to the D-pad and the left joystick of a standard control, game controller. Um, but what we want to do is with the debug checked, I'm going to hit the play button and with my mouse floating over the, uh, the scene value, um, I want to be able to see the value of player torque. Okay, and because we have debug turned on, if you look here, it's showing us the current value. Because we have debug checked, it's showing us the current value. And if I mash the, the A and D key, you can see that first value changing from zero to one, or zero to negative one, depending on which way we're pointing, or which way we're <coughs> pressing. And if we press the W and the S key, that last value changes. And those values are changing, they're capturing the user input, and they're mapping them to a vector 3 coordinate, x, y, z. Okay? So, whenever we see three values, x, y, and z, together, uh, we can kind of, you know, figure out what they are. Now, the issue here is that we're currently mapped to the x, z plane, which is not what we want. Uh, because what plane are we operating on? Where's, where's our action all taking place? Up, down, left, right. What's that? Heard it. X and Y. X and y. Thank you. So I'm going to toggle my play button and I'm going to change the mapping, the, the plane mapping, to X and Y. Now I'm going to test my user input. I'm going to hit play. And what I'm, I'm trying to make sure is I'm actually going to ignore the vertical input. Um, but as I press uh, left and right, I'm still getting X down here, which is okay, because this isn't really the, uh, the ideal layout. But you can see that we've kind of changed the mapping. We're getting these values into different, different fields. Um, we're actually going to get rid of this get access vector because it's storing both the horizontal and the vertical axis. And I just want to share with us how we can capture user input. We're going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to highlight the get access vector and hit the delete key. Or we can use this little cog over here in the right hand corner and delete that. <coughs> and in our input menu, we're going to go up to get access just above that. And I'll double click. So what we want to do is we want to basically capture the left, right, A and D key so that we can map that to a value that causes our player to rotate. Okay, and so that left and right, what we just discovered with the get access vector is that A and D corresponded to our horizontal input. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the horizontal access. We're going to get access. We go to access name, and we're going to type in capital H horizontal. And I'll leave it up here in case that uh, spelling. Uh, puzzles you for the first moment because we've got to get that spelling right. We've got to have the capital letter in there. And then we're going to map this to a variable. So we're going to capture the horizontal input. We're going to store it in a value. Okay. So on this store value, I'm going to click the drop down menu and create a new variable. Not a new global variable, but a new variable. And we're going to call this player. We'll call it player uh, ROT for, for rotate. We're going to get that access every frame. And now I'm going to hit the play button just so that I, I make sure I'm getting the left right input. If I hold down the A key, you can see that that value, the store value, goes to z negative 1. If I hold down the D value, the D key, you can see that, that value goes to positive 1. So I'm capturing the user input. I'm capturing that user input in a variable. It's not a static number. It's something that can change over time. That value, this player rotation, we can use down here in our add torque. And we want to torque according to our Z. So I'm going to 
find the, the Z drop down menu. And because we've made a player rot or a player rotation variable, we can use that here. Okay, so we're capturing the user input from the horizontal axis, restoring it in a player rotation variable. We're then using that variable down here to relate to how much we rotate according to our Z axis. Um, I'm gonna hit the play button and see if this works. Uh, there'll be a few bugs. Um, so if I hold down the left and right key, if it's sitting on the ground, you really don't see anything happen. Uh, but once you get off the ground, you can see that it starts to tilt, okay? There's a little bit of, there's a couple glitches that we need to, we need to figure out. The first glitch you might discover is that your rotational force uh, might be opposite of what you want it to be. Okay, you might notice that uh, with a, a standard horizontal mapping, the way that the keys are mapped, when I hold down, when, if I float in the air and I hold down my left key, it actually tips to the right, which is probably not what we want. I would think we'd want to hold down the right key to cause it to tip to the right. If we hold down the left key, we, we tip it back. Um, and we can fix that simply by adding a, a negative value in the multiplier. So we invert the value that we're multiplying for our player rotation. So if we do negative one, now we have an inverted value, which will give us the opposite effect. Um, so now I can kind of tip it to the right and I have a little bit more predictable control, although it's like so still out of control. I can't control it. No matter how, how you know, I try to finesse this and tap on the space bar, rotate to the left a little bit or torque to the left, um, it's very hard to control back and forth. And one thing that's going to help us quite a bit is adding some drag. So adding, uh, it spins very fast right now and it, it takes a long time to come to rest. Uh, and we can correct for that by looking at the physics of our player and increasing our rotational drag. Uh, Andrew, one thing that I saw, I think your add force on your thrust mechanic is still using global space and you're going to want to change it to self space for this. Um, but we can, we can get more control over this by saying don't rotate so fast, okay? And we could take down the multiplier potentially, but we still have the same trouble of it doesn't come to rest as quickly as we might want it to. In other words, if I'm flying up in the air and I get, that's, that's, a, that's a bug, right? It flew towards the camera. We'll fix that in a moment. Did you do that too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, things are going to be a little, a little crazy and out of control until we get it dialed in. Uh, but you can see that once it starts to tumble, it almost, it just, it's impossible to stop rotation. I got to, you know, you got to kind of counter the force and it's really hard to dial in. But what we can do is if we go to the player and we look in the inspector, and we go to the physics rigid body, the rigid body component that's added to our player, we have three important settings here. We have the mass, and the mass is kind of the weight of the object, and our mass is okay because our mass is directly tied to the force that's sending us up in the air, right? The more mass of an object is, the more force it's gonna to take to move it up. But then we have these drag values. The first drag is linear drag. Is anyone uh, familiar with the term drag? Can you define it for us, Justin? I remember one of my friends who was taking aerodynamics defined drag as like, when you're moving through the air and you keep your hands flat, you feel the wind like pushing against it. Yep. But if your hands flat like that, it goes through it better and it doesn't have so much resistance. Cool. Yep, that's a perfect analogy. Hold your hand out the window, you hold it flat, you're creating a lot of drag, mm -hmm. right? It's not aerodynamic. You turn it flat, you have less drag. Okay, so it's the force that's counteracting your movement. Um, drag is linear drag, meaning that if we're moving in a line in any single direction. Uh, the angular drag is the uh, rotational drag. And so what drag is going to do, I'm going to bump this up. I don't know what the scale is that we want to work on. So I'm going to bump this up to like just one to get started from 0 0.05. That's a huge jump from what it was, but we'll see what that gives us. Now, the more drag you have, the more force you're going to have to have to counteract the drag. But the result is that if you have drag, it's going to stop much quicker, okay? So if we have linear drag, that means that, you know, 
Uh, we could think of linear drag if, if we're walking and we stop and we have good shoes on, we're gonna come to a pretty quick stop. If we're on ice and we're ice skating and we stop our feet, we have like zero drag and we keep going, right? So um, we have like no drag on ice and we have a lot of drag when we're standing on carpet. Uh, and so we wanna play with these values. So we have angular drag, we bump that up, but we're gonna have to counteract how much uh, drag there is by increasing the multiplier, which translates to how much, basically how much force we're using. And I don't know, I'm gonna bump this up probably to 10 just to get started. And I'm gonna see what that leaves us with. I'm gonna hit the play button, and I'm gonna try to keep my player floating, and you can see that um, I'm still like way out of control. And I'm not sure if, that, if I need more drag or less of a multiplier on the force. So I'm gonna take my multiplier way down, and I'm gonna increment these values I just want to see what happens when, um, okay, so that's a little better, but you can see that uh, what I'm really looking for right now is I have a lot more control, except that my player is not coming to a stop, to stop as quick as I want it to with this rotation, which means that um, even though my rotation relative to the player feels okay, it's not coming to a stop quick enough which means that I need to increase its angular drag. So I'm gonna bump it up to five, and then I'm gonna go back to my multiplier. I'm gonna bump that to negative five, and I'm gonna hit play. And this is just a matter of kind of getting things dialed in. Okay, and everything's gonna be a little bit different. That actually feels pretty good. That was a lucky guess. So now you can see like things are a lot more snappy. I got a lot more control, and I can actually control this thing now. Okay, so we have like this basic, and still a little, I'll probably wanna to continue to increase the angular drag. Um, but now we have some control over it. We can take off and we can land 